if I was in charge and we don't have a problem with plumbing and sanitation and we don't have a problem with fire and we don't have a problem with structure, what's left? The building needs a water control layer and the water control layer is more important than the air control layer. And then the air control layer is more important than the vapor control layer and all three of them are more important than the thermal control layer. So this is what you need after you've handled the plumbing and sanitation, the fire and the structure. Everybody with me on this? And they're in order of importance. Now, the code focuses on the thermal control layer because it's the easiest one to calculate. If it's not important and you can calculate and measure it, the code obsesses over it. The most important is the water control layer, and if you read the code, it basically says, be good and good luck. And I don't have a problem with that because the less the code tells me about doing something, the more likely I'm able to do it correctly because they haven't screwed it up by making me do it incorrectly by writing it down. The code has many errors in it, and um, those errors can only be addressed by a professional, a licensed engineer or licensed architect that accepts the liability under architectural or engineering seal. And, and why would you want to do that, right? Except that you need to. So it drives me crazy. If life was good, I'd say there should be no code and only smart people should be doing buildings. Okay, well, no, that ain't gonna work, but, but, but there you go. All right, so water, more important than air. Both are more important than vapor. And um, all of them are more important than the thermal control. Um, you're better off not having a vapor control layer than having one in the wrong place. Let me repeat this. You're better off not having one than having one in the wrong place. Having one in the right place is better than not having one, but having one in the wrong place is worse than not having one. Everybody with me on this? Okay. So if we had a clean sheet of paper, this is what the perfect wall would look like. Um, the black line is the water, air, and vapor control layer, and it's on the outside of the structure. The blue layer is the thermal control layer, and the reason it's blue is Dow paid me to make it blue. It could be pink, it could be any other color. And then the cladding should be back ventilated and drained. It's the best of the best of the best. Works in Miami, works in Montreal, works in Memphis, Minneapolis, Monterey, the Mojave, you know, Muncie, works everywhere. Um, what are the odds that an old building is gonna look like this? Not gonna happen. So if an old building is leaking water and there's no back ventilation and drainage of your cladding system, your water control layer is gonna have to be on the inside and good luck with that. We, there are ways of doing it. Or maybe what we should do is intervene on the outside by figuring out a way to shed the water away from the critical spots. Because if I can't put a water control layer, maybe I can adjust how much is absorbed and concentrated on the outside of the building. And when I show you the tricks, you're gonna say, well, that's freaking easy. Old people used to do that. Yeah, exactly, that's, <laughs> that's the freaking point, all right? But this is the best of the best. So if I could do this on every building, I would. But I don't wanna do it on every building if the building is old and crotchety and attitude and has an opinion and it's irritating and it's, and it's stunningly beautiful. You know, okay, well, I'll, okay, I get it. I'm not going to be able to do this. But if I could, if I have a 1950s, 1960s crappy apartment building with no insulation that, you know, looks horrible, I can do it on the outside. Yay. All right, so if I take the perfect wall and I lay it one way, I get the perfect roof. I lay it the other way, I get the perfect slab. So the perfect roof would have a membrane here protected against the damage functions. It's not exposed to water, heat, and ultraviolet light. Well, if I put the membrane here, I can get at it to replace it, but if you put it there, you have to, right? 
So I'm protecting it with all of this stuff. And if I replace the ballast with dirt, grass, and a goat, I get a lead point. It's a green. The green roof doesn't make the roof work any better. It just makes you feel better about yourself. It's a psychological thing. I mean, dirt is not insulation. If it was, we would put it in bags and sell it at the Home Depot. It's just freaking dirt. Grass is not a reflective coating. Why not just add more insulation and paint your roof white? But no, we got a, you know, green roofs, you know, we're not, you know, it's ridiculous. Well, we need to store the water up on the roof. That's insane. The whole idea of a roof is to get the water off of the damn thing. People are, are nuts. So ask me how I think about green roofs. Joe, how do you think about green roofs? Well, I think they're great if it makes the building look good. I'm tired of changing the la chasing the last building. BTU and getting I want beauty. And if you're telling me that I'm doing it to make the building more livable and more beautiful, I'm all over that. I'm, I will throw myself in front of the bus to help make that green roof work. But if you want a lead pointing and say, you're an idiot, why don't you do the bike rack in the shower? Because it's stupid. You know, and by the way, good luck with that argument. Um, in fact, you should probably not even talk about it because it's real important not to irritate your clients. And you, know, you should you know, help your clients. Well, we're only going to use green jelly beans. We're only going to use insulation that has this blowing agent and not this blowing agent. We don't want anything with dead dinosaur juice. Okay, fine, whatever. It just makes it more interesting because you still have to follow the same physics, but now you're going to be a little limited as to how the configuration is going to look because of your, you know, the client needs. But at the end of the day, you follow the same principles, which is kind of, kind of fun. You flip it, you get the perfect slab, right? Dirt, stones, insulation, control layer, and concrete. So the perfect section would have the perfect roof, perfect wall, perfect foundation, and now you've got to simply connect them. And how you connect them is the magic. You connect the water control of the roof to the water control of the wall to the water control of the foundation, the air to the air to the air, the vapor to the vapor to the vapor, the thermal to the thermal to the thermal. That's it. That's the whole magic of building science. I don't need to do any damn calculations. Well, what should be the thermal resistance of the thermal layer? Well, whatever you think it should be, double it and shut up and don't worry about it, because that's not where your problem is going to be. Your problem is going to be your water control layer or your air control layer. And of the two, the water is more important. I've been quoted many times saying I've been doing this for over 40 years, and I've never gotten a call at 4 in the morning saying my building is leaking air. My building is leaking water is the call you're going to get. That's the one you have to, to deal with. We have air barrier this, air barrier that. If you really look at the air barrier stuff, what they really are are water control layers that have an air control function added to them. But first and foremost, they're a water control layer. You get that in your brain, you're going to stay out of trouble. Now, Failures rarely happen in the field of a roof or a field of the wall. They happen where roofs meet walls. They happen at holes, and the holes are windows and doors. And so windows are better than they've ever been. Walls are better, but we have more problems because of the connection between the window and the wall. So it's easy. You connect the water control of the wall to the water control of the window, the air control of the wall to the air control of the window, vapor, vapor, thermal, thermal put them in plumb level and square so they can operate and make sure the wind doesn't suck them out or blow them in and we're done. I've just compressed a 400 page AMA ASTM document on how to deal with windows and doors. Water, water, air, air, vapor, vapor, thermal, thermal, plumb level and square and make sure they're attached structurally and we're done. Now the problem is is that the window manufacturers don't know what part of their window is really their water control layer. And even if they tell you, don't listen to them. So I always make the connections to the back of the windows, the back of the doors, the back of the curtain walls, the back of the storefronts. So when they leak, the water's directed where? To the outside. 
A leak is not a leak if the client never sees it. Repeat after me. A leak is not a leak if the client never sees it.